All right, students. Today we are going to continue with the same uh, topic we have been discussing. Uh, so turn to page number two twenty four, which is uh, in your book, and uh, we are doing the loss of motion uh, topics uh, from that chapter. So yesterday we saw about first law, of Newton's first law, and Newton's second law, and these two things we have seen, and as well as the examples. So today we are going to continue uh, to see the next very very important. a uh, topic in newton's second law that is impulse impulse of a force so from this topic onwards i would expect that you should write everything in your notebook yesterday's topics i said you need not write in the notebook but from today's one so please write it in your uh, notebook so first of all we need to know about what is impulse so this is impulse called it is a force on a body for a short duration of time suppose um a bob is here like this hanging so what you do is you quick away give a snap flick on this very fast and the bob quickly immediately just goes up and then falls down and then comes back so that is called impulse force given not in a gentle way but it is in a very very quick manner you push the force and it comes back so force on a body for a short duration of time remember the force given should be very very large when compared to other external forces there there is a force of tension of the thread here there is a force of gravity over here these are all the actual forces which is balanced on this bob maybe the bob is also de- doing a uh, kind of an oscillation but this force you are giving it in an extent which is really large and also it is for a very very short duration of time uh, you can also imagine uh, maybe a ball is rolling maybe a football is rolling down and all of a sudden you are coming and giving a really a good kick so and this one goes quite fast in a short duration of time very very short duration of time a large amount of force has been given that is called impulse in a desi term you can say you slap a person nicely give a force short duration of time that is impulse now we'll see the mathematical relationship which is there involved with this one so impulse it says mathematically impulse is equal to the product of force and a small interval uh, time interval for which it acts so that moment of time it acts the force acts that is called impulse so it is given a term called j it is force into delta t and this delta t should should be very small a small amount of time and the force a large force acts on this one that is called impulse an impulse it is a vector quantity so it is a vector quantity you get here j vector because f is going to be a vector quantity here right now impulse is not a very very short just definition and it goes away it is really something very very important it goes on with various other things now you can write down this like this so um impulse is mathematically equal to the product of the force and the small time interval j is equal to f into delta t the force is said to be impulsive force in nature which is large compared to the surrounding forces and the time taken is very small let f be the force given to a body for a short time interval delta t for j is equal to f into delta t 
F is equal to mass into acceleration. We know this one. Since F is equal to mass into acceleration here, so J is equal to, be equal to M into A into delta T. Okay. Now we know again acceleration is equal to be equal to dv by dt or you can say change in velocity upon change in time rate of change of velocity with respect to time so mass into delta v upon delta t into delta t that is called j these two get, get gets cancelled out so j is going to be equal to m into delta v so what is m into delta v we can also make sure that what is delta v is equal to so delta v is going to be equal to change in velocity mass into final velocity minus initial velocity that is called j which is going to be equal to mass into final velocity upon mass into initial velocity we can also change, tell it as it is going to be the final momentum minus initial momentum that is j and j can be also wrote written as delta p delta p could be the thing <coughs> it is called change in momentum so we can finally write impulse in a short term here like this so i will bring this whole term to the initial part what we have started like so write down the next line write down the next line j is equal to f into delta t that is equal to delta p so what we can write it as the impulse is going to be equal to f into delta t equal to delta p so that is the final format of this one now we can say okay what is the use of this the force into time is equal to change in momentum so impulse is equal to force into change in time equal to change in momentum So F into delta T is equal to delta P is the basic thing. Otherwise, M into V minus U. So F into T. This is also way you can say. Or you can say it's always delta T. It's better to do that way. Now, impulse has an SI unit. What is the SI unit here for impulse? So you know this one as Newton and seconds, it is Newton seconds is going to be the SI unit. And what is the dimension of this one? So dimension analysis, ML T minus 2 is the force and T is the time. So it becomes ML T minus 1 is going to be the dimension. Right. Now, how it is applied? What is the various examples which is given? For impulse so I'm just going to read from this book so already it's given here f is into delta t and this is the value here you can take a look j is equal to delta p and uh, take a look on the next page also you will find impulse is coming here like this so impulse basically is equal to f into delta p is equal to delta p f is in delta t is equal to delta p that's why it's clear from the equation that impulse is a measure of degree uh, to which an external force produces a change in momentum of a body. So that is the final definition. This has to be bracketed. You can just write on that also. Now, we are going to see the examples. Now, why does a cricketer move his hands backwards while catching a ball? That is something to do with impulse. So that is something to do with impulse. A cricketer moves his hand backwards while catching a ball. Now, let us go back to the formula and then do it now look at this one the ball is coming in a very high velocity and this guy has to stop the ball by catching it some baby uh, fellow is now catching the ball and he is standing now usually what happens the ball is coming in a high velocity maybe it is coming in 50 meter per second or maybe 50 kilometers per hour 
and all of a sudden it has to go to zero velocity right the change in velocity is from 50 the initial velocity to the final velocity is zero that is the change in velocity and the mass also it will be added together multiplied together that's the change in momentum this change in momentum is always here a constant value because the speed is there final speed we already know it should be there now this guy has to manage because the change in momentum is there the force will be very heavy force this ball ball will exert on him he has to take it in a huge force he has to be bearing it so what this guy does is is he does a kind of an um, kind of a plays uh, plays around this whole thing because in the initial time when he catches he just catches the ball and then the hurt, hand really hurts now what he says is he swings the hand along with this one he just takes it through this time from here to here he swings it have you seen that one why does he swing the ball, uh, hands when he is receiving it because here he is trying to increase the time of impact the impact time he is trying to increase it maybe the impact time is he is increasing it for 5 seconds to 10 seconds that means the force will immediately decrease the multiplication of both of them the delta t into f is going to be a constant value so whatever you you play it around you increase the you want to have the great force then reduce the time of impact so 50 to 0 anyhow it has to come the delta the moment change in momentum anyhow it has to take place this will not change this is going to be there for this ball so increase the time of the impact the force will definitely will be less on your hands so that is what it is so by moving his hands backwards the, the cricketer increases the time duration of the complete completing the catch thus he exerts a smaller force to stop the ball and saves his hand from getting hurt quite simple so this part has to be written here force is decreased because time is increased so that moment change in momentum it does it but in the increased time now many of you do do the long jump okay or even the high jump now in our thing that is when there is a high jump pole is there so children come and uh, jump then we have a pit of sand we have a sand pit is there so uh, somebody is jumping and then he comes and falls so he is able to experience uh, quite a less kind of, kind of a force for example if we do this one in an assembly area fully mosaic floor high jump is there and the fellow is coming and falling here what happens he just comes and falls in a gravity here and he's immediately the velocity has to become zero from a heavy velocity and this fellow will get hurt so much the pakka floor whenever you are here there it hurts so much so when you are there in the sand or maybe in a foam what happens here force into delta t is equal to delta p so the sand will pull him to an extent it will just give you away and so the time is increased so the force on him will be decreased and the delta p the change in momentum it is taking place in an increased time level so the force is less for him so a person jumping from a height on a pakka floor receives more injury than the person jumping on a kacha floor a kacha floor is nothing but something but a kind of a sand or anything it gives him a very very good thing remember time duration increase force it decreases so he doesn't get hurt the next question example vehicles like cars buses scooters are provided with shocker shockers why you do the same thing because when there is a bike wheel is there and you find a shocker is there and the seat is there on the top and then there is another vehicle is, is this one suppose the vehicle goes on a pit it goes on a pit and comes up comes back so what happens here is it immediately the momentum changes it goes down and comes back so what happens is this particular wheel which has a shocker will absorb the effect here and increase the time interval of that effect so that the person sitting here will not experience more amount of force have you seen that one whenever there is a good shocker is there you don't feel much hurt maybe you drive in a cycle which has no shocker sometimes 
how much it hurts you just go on a and bump it is it hurts you a lot because there's no shocker the time interval is not there all of a sudden you just go down and up the entire thing is transferred to the force so shockers are a very very good example of getting the time increased shockers will get the time increase and decrease the force next one is bogies of a train are provided with buffers have you seen and uh, there is a, a train garage is there another train is there and then this one will have uh, some kind of an push is there and then here also another thing is there a push is there have you seen that one what is that doing here it is actually a buffer which has a spring inside it creates the impact is there it tries to push it and inside so it doesn't get hurt much so that's the reason it increases the time interval and decreases the force the force is decreased so that the change in momentum becomes easy all right so these are all the examples of my impulse please learn this one thoroughly these are all important this um examples um you can just note down a bit a uh, small way but uh, you need not write so much but you have to know how to explain it okay so you got to just make the mathematical expressions clear and then write here accordingly we'll go to the next uh topic that is newton's third law of motion this looks quite simple oh i know this third law for every action there is a equal and opposite reaction we have been learning this one from a small age okay that is all the primary level of understanding but we need to little move above and see what exactly it says so newton's third law of motion this one law tells about how forces are exerted what really happens in the force okay suppose um you are having in your hands um you wanted to give a real uh, beating on a mosquito which is here okay so the mosquito is hitting you all way so you the mosquito just stands here and you just take your hands and just slap on this mosquito and eventually what happens usually mosquito flies away and what you do you get give a good whack on the table or a surface so you exerted a force here the force exerted here now eventually when you exert a force have you seen your hand also pains why it is pains it should not pain you have just given a force only this it tells about the action reaction thing whenever you are exerting a force on something this table also gives a equal force on the top of your hands that's the reason whatever the force you are given that much equally this hand pains it same is that of if you are doing any kind of a boxing or you go and slap a person your hand also pains have you tried giving a good uh, slap to a, a cow or a buffalo and you just give a good nice slap in your hands and your hand will pain same it with you just hit a wall good uh, nicely you give a hit on the wall the hand will pain why the hand is paining because you gave a force this dumb object dumb object gave the equal and opposite force on your hand now you can ask why it is giving me that kind of an force that is what nature is every action you will get a reaction immediately with no time the natural substances it will give a reaction some is exact the same amount of newtons it will give a reaction so so what to do so you should never give a force no force should be given so that we will never get a reaction you do not you should not hit a mosquito because mosquito will again the table will again hit you or you will should never kick a ball the ball will again kick you that's not the thing but there are so much of advantages because of newton's third law of motion so we're going to just read um uh, quite a thing now remember a single isolated force therefore okay now the before that one therefore two bodies must be treated on an equal footing whenever you have a, a force and uh, action and reaction you need two bodies hand is there table is there then only the force is applied here and this is giving up force there should be two bodies a single body cannot apply a force 
you should have two bodies to apply a force. That's what it says. Therefore, two bodies must be treated on an equal footing. A single isolated force is therefore an impossibility. We arbitrarily label one of the forces of mutual interaction between the two bodies as an action force. So, suppose one coin is there, carom board coin is there and you, you have a striker which is a big striker which is there. Okay, And this striker comes and hits here. As soon as it hits here, this one starts moving but just observe what happened to the striker. Striker moves behind. After hitting, the striker will not keep going ahead. Striker moves, moves behind. Because of the impact, this has given the force but this is given again an equal and opposite force back into this one making this one to bounce back and this one moves forward. So there are two objects. One is giving a force to this one. As soon as he receives a force, it will exert the equal and opposite force back on this one and then this will start moving. That is called action and this is called reaction. This is called action and then the opposite one is called reaction. You will get it always. Whenever you give a force, you will get a reaction. That is always the universal rule. You give an action of force, the force will give a reaction. Right? So we will see one more uh, thing. Let a body A exert a force FAB on a body B. So this is body A is giving a force FAB on the body B. When the body, as soon as it raises a force, body B will give an equal amount of force to A also. FBA is exerted on this one. So it shows, um, the, the experiment shows the body B exerts FBA on body A. Further, the vector equation of the event will be under like this. The total force exerted can be equal to 0. FAB is equal to FBA is equal to 0. But when you take the other side, FAB is equal to minus of FBA. This is called action. FAB is action and this is called reaction and it is equal and opposite. This is equal and opposite. So there is a negative sign here. So that's the way action and reaction works. Now we will go to the next page and see what are the other examples as well as the expression continues. So reading this one is very important. It is important that action and reaction never act on the same body. Therefore, they never neutralize each other. They don't cancel out each other. So there is a hand, there is a table, two bodies are there and it will give one another. Further, further, for a single object, reaction is an external force and for a number of objects, it could be an internal force. And since internal force never changes, the dynamics of the body, therefore, they do cancel out. We can give another kind of an example here, like, okay, I had hit the table here with my hands, my hand is paining, the table has got a hit here. Now, what happened to the, all the internal molecules? They all have its own forces. Yes, they all have forces. One get the force, another also will get a force, all the things. They will all cancel out each other. These internal forces will cancel out each other. Don't worry about it. The external force it gives, immediately it gives an opposite force. So that's the way it is. The internal force will not count for the external force there. Now let us read some of the examples here. Walking on a ground. So suppose a person is walking on a ground. Right? So a person is walking on a ground. So as the person walks on a ground, what happens? So, he pushes his one, the heel it, he pushes on the floor and the floor equally oppositely it gives another force. Whatever he force he gives immediately it is given. That's the reason he is moving. Imagine the floor doesn't give, maybe you have a water here and you push and what happens? There's no reaction, the water displaces. Have you seen the water displaces and the leg sinks? Can you walk? It is not possible to walk. So the floor is very very useful. This is called action and then heat gives another force that's called reaction. So walking on a ground it is action and reaction. You can just read this one for yourself. Walking on a sand or an ice it is very difficult to walk on a sand or even walking on a water is difficult because water displaces. The sand gets displaced with the result that the reaction from the sand is very small. It gives a reaction 
it is very very small so we come to a very very basic understanding about one very important part call suppose if there is a block kept here it exerts a force m into g now the table also always exerts a force does it happen like this without any external all of a sudden it did not give a bang it is already just lying there a dumb book is lying there a block is lying there and it is giving all automatically and silent force mg is given there does this give a reaction yes it gives that is called reaction here r is equal to m into g it is equal and opposite so that's the reason the book is staying here otherwise if there had it been a paper or anything of a, a very flimsy things it just breaks down and goes there is no reaction here so reaction makes it to be stable there itself the book is staying on the place right so the next one is pulling of cart by a horse so that was a, a basic example whenever the cart pulls it gives a tug so maybe there is a cart is there and it has to be pulled so there is a horse which is kept and then it gives a push so this animal it gives a real force and then the reaction is there and it pulls the it pulls the thing and equally you will also receive a tug have you seen that one the equally it also receives a tug so the it becomes very very difficult for this cart to move because you give a pull and then it gives immediately another push uh, attention on this one that is attention is equal and opposite so that's the reason the cart pulling is very very tough so it gives a pull and as well as it also receives the equal and opposite so that whole thing it comes to that floor and it the floor is really strong then it is able to pull it out so that's what it is given and then swimming swimming is a very very good example rowing also is a good example suppose there is a boat is there and you have a row so you are trying to uh, give the uh, push here as you push here this one the water will give an equal and opposite push to the boat because you are sitting in the boat and doing it that's the reason boat is moving forward and the water is being pushed down backwards even aeroplane and all the things it is all comes in the same example here so if there is an oh, propellant is there because of that the aeroplane is going to move forward and this is going backwards so action and reaction always takes place then only the moment happens firing of a gun is also there you give a good fire you have a ak47 or whatever it is and you have a fire free fire and then pubg and all doesn't give that kind of a thing you fire one bullet you get really a good push if it is going in 200 meter per second that 200 meter per second along that weight of this one it gives on your shoulders or then gives on your hands it is really heavy so sometimes people just give a trigger and then it gives a good push and people fall down at times it get they get hurt because of bullet speed it will again give the other back that's called recoil of a gun firing of a gun so it moves and then the gun recoils backwards that's called motion right fine sounds good so we have studied about this newton's third law and the examples we'll go to the next very very important topic it is law of conservation of linear momentum remember conservation is something a term to be sort of understood clearly we saw about the conservation conservation of two things we saw about conservation of energy we know the law of conservation of energy what is law of conservation of energy law of conservation of energy that is called energy can neither be created nor be destroyed one form of energy will be transformed to another form of energy so you have 50 joules we here means 50 joule of petrol is there means you convert it into a kinetic energy so that's the way it is so energy will be converted to some other energy that is what that means the energy which is supplied together it is always a constant it is always a constant all the energy is a constant together that's what the basic meaning is similarly similarly momentum 
momentum is also conserved the momentum which is there which is here in one form will be transferred to the another form don't think a new momentum will again keep on generating nobody can generate any momentum how it is happening some form of energy is being transferred to another form similarly the momentum one momentum will give it to another i already told an example about a striker there is a big coin is there there is another coin is there this is a coin so this striker comes and hits here this is having a mass this is having a velocity it comes and hits here m into v is the velocity momentum of this one now this is already there in initial velocity is zero and this is having a small mass are called m1 as soon as this hits here this is the initial moment of this one m into u is going to be zero here as soon as it hits here this immediately starts moving in a higher velocity m into v maybe m1 into v but this gives an equal and opposite also so this momentum which was coming there it quickly changes it quickly changes the momentum is now transferred to another thing and this is giving another equally opposite another momentum here so here you find here the change in momentum is always a constant you are not having generating all of a sudden momentum and out of the air it started moving no there is one body hitting another body transferring its momentum this to this momentum and this takes some momentum meanwhile it gives some momentum back also to this that's what it is so m into v it is finally equal to m1 into v of this one maybe m1 into u you can say and then again it goes back also minus m into maybe v2 so this also takes it back is all things so together one momentum comes means it has been distributed to many other momentums the sum of all the momentum is going to be a constant value so that is called law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of energy law of conservation of momentum these two are the basic phenomenon of the entire physics of this year there are so many other law of conservation also law of conservation of mass is there law of conservation of charges are there there's are all there you would have studied in the very first chapter which we studied the basic principles of physics so we have let us go ahead and try to see the mathematical part of it how the mathematical part works here okay so we are going to uh, see how with the derivation goes on um please write down write down as consider two bodies of masses m1 and m2 with momentum p1 and p2 respectively with momentum p1 and p2 respectively therefore total momentum is equal to p vector is equal to be equal to p1 vector plus p2 vector total momentum this is the total momentum of the whole body here now let us suppose in this system we add an another additional force let f1 and f2 be the forces be the forces on m1 and m2 for a time delta t the delta t is very very small actually okay for a time delta t so whenever you give f1 to p1 and then f2 to p2 what happens that the change in momentum happens okay so the next one is let the delta p1 and delta p2 be the change in momentum there's a change in momentum happens here right so after the change in momentum is there so what happens is the total change in momentum delta p delta p is equal to delta p1 plus delta p2 that's the change in momentum but remember there is a small time interval which is taken place the force is being given for small time interval because of that time interval only change in momentum is taken place so dividing the whole thing by delta t so delta p divided by delta t is equal to delta p1 
upon delta t plus delta p2 divided by delta t. So entirely it has been divided. So if you divide the rate of change of momentum, what is the value? What is the rate of change of momentum? Okay, and again rate of change of momentum is here. So you get here because of the change in momentum, you can also write this one as what is it could be written also as dp upon dt. We know this one rate of change of momentum. Okay, delta t and delta p can be written as dp by dt and dp1 by dt plus dp2 by dt. So we come back to a little more matured way of writing it in that kind of a calculus method. So that's the way it is written here. So we know dp1 by dt is going to be called as an F1, the force F1, which has been given here, and dp2 upon dt is equal to F2, another force given here. So put in the same expression itself. Put in the same expression. What is dp upon dt? So here, dp upon dt is equal to F1 plus F2. So that's the basic uh, calculation which is here. Now this is the very very important one that is the change in momentum is going to be equal to the force applied here. Now this force also could be of external force and an internal force. Here also external force and an internal force. So we can write it as force of external F1 external plus F1 internal plus F2 external plus F2 internal. So this is the force here. So as it becomes internal and external here, so when you are whenever you are seeing an uh, togetherness, so dp upon dt, so you will find here as let us add the together force F1 external plus F2 external both external force you put it together and then plus F1 internal plus F2 internal you may ask sir what is internal force what is external force it's quite confusing here what is you are talking about now so I already told you maybe you give a good force to a football what happens football immediately moves force is given football moves there is external force but internally there are all the air molecules are there there is a bladder which is there there is an outside cover is there these also will have internal forces but all the internal forces together will cancel out each other and it will not actually come out as an internal force giving an external force here this external force because of that the body moves but internal force will cancel out each other that's what internal force means so this internal force always it is zero always it is zero so here dp upon dt is always f1 external plus f2 external so remember that it is not to do with anything with the internal okay so the total external force it can be also written as what is the total external force you can write it as dp upon dt is equal to f external total external force you can write it here okay now at times maybe the body is there the body is there and this is a kind of a system here this body is anyhow moving and going to hit another one and this is going to go and hit here and it is going to come back and hit another one and it hits here and it is going to hit back this one all these things it is a kind of a system is there if you are not giving any external force every time you are not pushing pushing every time you are not giving 50 newtons all the time one by one so you push this one and again it goes and comes back again you push this one you are not doing that it has already started and it is going on hitting hitting and again coming back if there is external force is zero then what happens dp vector upon dt is it going to be equal to zero that means the momentum the net momentum is going to be equal to a constant whenever the chain rate of change of momentum is zero okay what is p is going to be equal to p should be constant then only that the differentiation will be zero 
if the p is not constant differentiation will not be zero it will have something else so that if the converse is the momentum is going to be a constant value in other words p vector is going to be equal to p1 vector plus p2 vector plus p3 vector etc pn vector the sum of all the momentum will be a constant value some momentum is already there this is giving another momentum it is giving another momentum to another one and it is giving another momentum all the momentum will be put together it is equal to the total momentum which was initially there initially some momentum was there that momentum is getting transferred this momentum is getting transferred to some other body and it is momentum is again coming back so all the momentum p1 p2 p3 every time in this isolated system it will keep on transferring the momentum the sum of the momentum will be always constant unless and until you start pushing anything else externally then only the momentum the entire thing will change but once the momentum is given the momentum is going to be the total momentum is going to be a constant value remember that now i'm just giving you the final thing and with this we'll close here um it says in the absence so it says in the absence of an external force the total momentum of the system remains constant and does not change with time so it's already told the fx and fy also you can tell like this which yields an interesting result that a law of conservation of momentum can be applied separately for any direction provided for a force acting in that direction is zero so dp is equal to d external into delta t and p is equal to constant therefore force external it need not be equal to zero therefore we conclude we can apply a law of conservation of momentum even in the presence of an external force also like friction provided that delta t is very very small okay it almost tends to zero that is called impulsive force that also it's possible so recoil of the gun is there earth and a ball example is there is all law of conservation of momentum remember this entire law of motion it pins mainly on this momentum the net momentum is constant that is very very important we will be doing so many numericals based on law of conservation of momentum right and at the next page it has a few of the things of the examples jumping from a boat to a shore flight in a rocket explosion of a bomb these are all things are example of law of conservation of momentum please read these examples so with this we close and we'll see the rest of them in the next class thank you